Automatic Flight Control System or AFCS. That is the name of the autopilot system in this helicopter. Before I explain about the functions of the autopilot and the flight director, first a little bit about stability. A helicopter is naturally unstable, so aerodynamically we will fall out of the sky if we don't manipulate the flight controls constantly. A fixed wing aircraft on the other hand is aerodynamically stable. That means if you're in trim, you let go of the yoke, it will keep its flight path more or less. Even with a little bit of disturbance, it will find its flight path more or less back. A helicopter does not. We really fall out of the sky very quickly. So, to prevent us from constantly flying and manipulating the flight controls to even fly straight and level, we have some stability help that is always on, on the background. Now, before I explain about the upper mode, sort of flight director part of the autopilot, first a little bit about the flight controls itself. We fly with a cyclic, a collective, and feet on our pedal. That's basically what we do. Now, our autopilot in the background is always working. We can even not depart without both autopilots actually working. This is our AFCS or autopilot panel. And before we take off, both autopilots, number one and two, needs to be engaged. Without autopilots engaged, we are not allowed to even perform a takeoff. That does not mean the helicopter is actually flying on its own. It only means the stabilization in the background is working. The AFCS system uses two types of actuators per channel to actually help us flying the helicopter. First, we have the linear actuator. These actuators are on top of the, of the cabin and work really fast with a small travel constantly to assist our movements. So any movements in the flight controls, the series actuator constantly corrects this for a stable flight path. That is the task of the series actuator. They are very fast. Then on top of that, we have a set of parallel actuators. These parallel actuators are actually flying the helicopter when the autopilot is coupled to an upper mode, or they give us feedback in sense of spring force against our flight controls for normal manual flying. Before each flight, we have to make sure our autopilots are actually working. We have two autopilots, completely separate. They check each other constantly during the flight and they need to be serviceable at all time. Before we start our flight, we actually test our autopilots. So as soon as the hydraulics are up and the rotor is turning, we test the autopilot on the AFCS panel. So we have autopilot one, autopilot two, and a test button. As soon as we have hydraulics, I can press the test button and the autopilot will run a built-in self-test. Once we have done our test, we engage autopilot one and two, and the helicopter is ready for flight. Now, even though autopilot one and two are engaged, there is no upper mode at this moment engaged. So this is what we still call manual flying. On top of our basic autopilot panel, we have the upper mode selection panel. Currently it's on standby, there is no mode engaged at this moment. First on the right top, you have a PFD button. This is the primary flight display. The autopilot is listening to at this moment. So currently it's to my side, to the right. If I press it, the autopilot will actually now listen to PFD on the left side. So my colleague in the left in this case. Back to the right. And then below this, we have all the selectable modes from our flight director. Heading hold, well, kind of simple. It holds the heading we are currently at. Indicated airspeed, it holds obviously our indicated airspeed at that time. But these modes can also be changed on our flight controls actually. Same as the vertical speed mode, we can change on our collective if we need a set vertical speed. Altitude hold, which holds the altitude compared to our uh, barometric altitude. Then we have a rudder height hold. What this does is a uh, radio altimeter height set at that time it will keep. Navigation button and this navigation can listen to whatever is selected on the PFD. So if my navigation is to the FMS or a GPS waypoint, it will fly to that waypoint. If it's set to an ILS or a conventional navigation aid like a VOR, it will follow the VOR. 
Approach mode. This is selected when we start our approach, either for an RMP or a GPS approach or for a conventional approach. Decelerate. This is during the approach that we can decelerate automatically to a set speed. Then the ALT-A button. This button you will hear probably in most of my videos, especially in the beginning, because it's actually called Altitude Acquire. So we can preset in our primary flight display a certain altitude. Once pressed the Altitude Acquire button, it will climb or descend to the preset altitude. Next up is the hover that gives us a hover mode. So once we are stationary in the air, we press hover mode and the helicopter will stay exactly on that position in the air. And we can manipulate that on the flight controls. The rest we actually do not have installed in our helicopter. So these are the basic modes that we use all the time during our day-to-day -day operation. The information to the pilot is actually given on the primary flight display or the PFD. On the top part of the PFD, that is where the information from the autopilot is presented to us. Now you have a good understanding of the automatic flight control system that is running all the time in the background of this helicopter. I want to explain a little bit about the flight controls. First the cyclic, as you can see the cyclic is always in my right hand. And for the autopilot functionalities on the cyclic, first I have a trim button or what we call the Chinese head. The trim button has multiple functions. If I fly in manual mode or attitude mode, I can manipulate the trim and the helicopter will actually be flown by this, by the trim only. The same button also has the function for heading to the left or to the right when I'm on heading hold. Indicated airspeed up or down as well when I have indicated airspeed mode. And these functions are very good for instance when you are vectored for an approach. It's very nice to keep your hands close to the controls and when you hear a new heading you need to fly you just go with your thumb to the new heading and let it go. The helicopter will do the rest. Then I have the force trim release button here with my thumb. If I press it you will hear a click and this releases the parallel actuator and now I can freely move the cyclic without any force from the spring. This is really raw flying and something we do only by lifting the helicopter up in the hover or putting it down on the deck. The last little bit, that's when we really need our hands on the controls constantly. Then we have a flight director standby. So if I have upper modes or flight director modes engaged, only one press and everything will be disengaged. The flight director will be standby and I'm back to attitude mode as it's called and I can freely move the cyclic by pressing the force trim or using the trims. Then a very rudimental switch is the SES release. If I press this button here completely all autopilot modes, even the AFCS mode, everything is gone. So this is actually a dangerous switch so to say. So if I press this switch accidentally in flight it's going to be a very rough ride and we need to be fairly quick to engage both autopilots again to have a stable flight. Collective, what I have in my left hand, under the collective I have the same switch as on the cyclic, a trim release. If I press it with my middle finger I can freely move the collective. If I do not press the switch I have spring force pulling the collective down. Same as I leave the collective in this new position, I need to push against the spring down on the collective. So this is basically the force trim release on the collective. We use that all the time when manual flying. Then we have a trim button on the collective, up and down, that we can use for the rattled height, altitude or for the vertical speed mode where we can change the vertical speed. For the pedals of the automatic flight control system, they are actually moved by itself, by the parallel actuator moving the pedals left and right during flight. Even if I fly manual, the helicopter is kept in coordinated turns without me manipulating the pedals. However, if I want to press a pedal, either to maneuver or to fly completely manual, I have to lightly touch the pedal until you hear a click, that is the micro switches, and now I can freely move the pedal left and right. Alright guys, whilst we are preparing the 139 again for another offshore flight, I would really like to thank you all for watching my videos. If you have a question, don't hesitate, put a comment in the comment section below or a suggestion for maybe another topic for a new video. Once again, thank you very much and see you next time.